Hello Orchestra, we are on page 37 of String Basics. I'm using the violin book today. Today we're going to learn about three note slurs. We've done two note slurs in pages earlier, but now we're going to do three notes all on one bow. We're also going to be uh, playing in 3-4 time and learning to do pickup notes in 3-4 time. All right, let's get started. Number 183, Tricky Rhythm Time. Before we play this song, we'd like to check the key signature and the time signature. First off, the key signature shows us that there's one, two sharps. So there's gonna be F sharp and C sharp. That's called the key of D, remember that? And here is the time signature three, four, meaning three beats will be in each measure. As I play these notes, I'm going to be counting one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and it'd be good for you to do that out loud too, if it doesn't mess you up too much. Also, try to get into the habit of tapping your toe to the beat. Tap, tap, tap. I'll give you a count off of one, two, three, and then we start. Rest, two, three. One, two, three, one, two. We could have also said the notes like D2, D, E2, E, F sharp 2. Practice that and make sure you can play it before moving on to the next song. 184 three note slurs memorization line. We're going to play three notes with one bow, like this. The first three notes D, E, F sharp. <laughs> One, two, three. And then uh, the third measure there goes A, B, C sharp. So on the A string, and we're going to play those with one bow as well. And those are called three note slurs. I'm going to count rest, two, three, and then we're going to start. Rest, two, three. Three note slurs. 185, Rise Up Old Flame is a round. So you can do this as a round in class with others, or if you have a partner that you're practicing with, you could do this as a two part round. Let's first learn to play it all together. Notice that this song has a different key signature. There's no sharps in the key signature. So, what does that tell us about our? finger pattern violins and violas cellos basses are you thinking one two okay remember one two pattern meaning our second finger is going to play f natural and c natural by using a one two finger pattern and for cellos that means you're using a one two finger instead of a one three finger to play the c naturals and f naturals basses you're also using your second finger Maybe we should count the rhythm of this since it does look like it has some eighth notes as well as quarter notes and half notes all mixed together. So I'm going to point to the notes and just show you how you should count this, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, and two, and three, one, two, three. Watch that again and see if you can count with me. Ready? Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, 
three and one and two and three, one, two, going on now, one, two, three, one, two, three and one and two and three, one, two, three. Getting used to counting in three is going to maybe feel kind of weird to you at first because you haven't done that yet or done it much. So um, don't feel bad if you're going one, two, three, four. If you're kind of thinking in patterns of four still, I get it. Okay, you just have to think in patterns of three. Tell yourself that there's no patterns of four in this. Remember the F naturals and the C naturals on this, okay? I'm gonna say rest, two, three, and then we'll begin. Rest, two, three. It's a fun one to uh, play. It's got a lot of interesting notes to play and rhythms and some four fingers for our violins and violas. 186, Sleeping Beauty. We're going to start by looking at the key signature and the time signature. That's always what we should do when we first look at a new song to sight read, okay? So we have three, four time signature. That's what we've been doing, counting in sets of three. And look, we only have one sharp in the key signature this time. The F will be sharped, but not the C. The C will be played natural. Also notice we've got slurs thrown in here, three note slurs. We've got two lines of music, so when we get to here, make sure your eyes go to the next line. And then we've got a first ending repeat and a second ending, which we've talked about before. Also notice that this particular note has a sharp in front of it. This C, which would be normally played as C natural because of the key signature, the composer of this song would like it to be C sharp, but only this note will be C sharp. This note will go back to normal, C natural. Okay, so whenever a sharp is put in front of a note, it changes that note, but just for that measure and then it goes back. I'm gonna go, I wanna say rest, two, three, and then we'll start. Rest, two, three. second finger down. B, two. And second ending. We could talk uh, quite a bit about this stuff in that song. There's, there's quite a bit of uh, stumbling blocks 
for us in that song between slurs and repeat signs, first and second endings, bow lifts, F sharp, sliding our finger to C natural. That's kind of a new skill. We haven't seen that yet in the book. And uh, so you'll need to spend some time on that to get uh, comfortable with it. So do that on your own. Here's Minuet by Bach. Minuet by Bach. A key signature is back to two sharps. And we are counting in sets of three and three, four. Notice we have eighth notes and some are slurred, some are not. These are bow markings, remember, just in case we get a little mixed up on our bow going down and up at the wrong time. These bow markings will remind us what the direction should be of our bow. Fourth finger there. All right, and no repeat sign. I'll count rest, two, three, and we'll, then we'll play one, two, and three, and one, two, three, okay? Rest, two, three. short song that you could practice um, several times to get better at. That one seems to actually be a little easier than doing the Sleeping Beauty Waltz. So I think you'll probably be able to play that one with a little less effort, but who knows? It's different for everybody. Let's look at 188 Forest Fawn. This particular song in your book is an orchestra arrangement. Remember back on page 25, we did orchestra march, and that was also an orchestra arrangement where the violins have a different part in their book than the violas, and then the cellos, and then the basses. Each group in the orchestra is playing different rhythms and different notes. So what I'll do here is I will be playing for you the violin part, and then I will uh, pause the video, and I think I'll show you the cello and the bass part. And I may get to the viola part. I'll take a look at it and decide whether violas need my help or not. Let's start with violins. Forest Fawn, three, four time signature. And what is the key signature? No sharp. So this is the key of C. Okay, no F sharps or C sharps. So everything is, will be played F and C natural. All those F's and C's will be natural. Um, make sure you play with the correct finger pattern. All right, so also starts with a pickup note. So this is a note in a measure all by itself. We call that a pickup note. The director will say rest two, three, usually to start a three, four time. But since we only have, since this song has a pickup note, the director will only say rest two, and then we start playing on beat three on the A right here. So it'd be like rest two, play. Sometimes the director will give you a full measure plus two more just to kind of give you the feel of how fast to go like this. One, two, three, one, two, and then we would start, if that makes sense. All right, let's kind of look through the song here. We have a A, one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three, one. Notice that this pattern of two eighth notes, quarter note, quarter note, is repeated in these three measures. Okay, then measure five, A, one and two, three, one and two, three. Are you noticing that these measures are identical to these two measures here? They are. But this one is different. One and two and three and one, two, three. Okay, then we got measure nine. One and two, three, one, two, 
So you notice we have lots of slurs going on here. Sometimes they're two note slurs, sometimes they're three note slurs. Here's a measure of two note slurs. One and two and three and one, two. And now we've got to pick up the measure 13. E, one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two and three and one, two. Hold. Also want to notice that these four measures are the same as these four measures. When you see things that are same like that, it takes what appears to be a very long and complicated song and it makes you think, wait a minute, it's not as long and complicated as I first thought because there are parts that repeat. There's lots of repeated parts. Once I learn the first pattern, then I can just play it easily the next time I see that pattern. Isn't that cool? Now I will tell you right now that when we get to this measure right here, it's got some um, challenging uh, ways of slurring because we're crossing strings with the bow. So to give that measure some extra practice, slow practice right there. I know I needed to practice quite a bit on it um, to make sure your fingers and your bow are all cooperating correctly. All right, I'm going to play it right now. I'm going to say rest two and then we'll start with the A on an up bow. Rest two. I uh, should practice that more to make it sound better, but at least I gave you a chance to hear what it sounds like pretty well played with a few out of tune notes. <laughs> Notice right here that these two notes are not slurred, but they are slurred above. Remember how I said the, these four measures are the same or these four measures? Well, on these six notes, the composer has changed the last two notes to make them not slurred, so just be aware of that, okay? 188 Forest Fawn 4 are violas. Violas, I'm playing uh, your part on a violin, so when you hear it, it's going to sound higher than your instrument, just so you know, okay? Your instrument will sound lower, and that's okay. Don't try to sound high like mine. But uh, the rhythm and the notes will help you, that I play, will help you uh, as you try to play the notes on your instrument, okay? We're going to count rest, two, and then we're going to start with an up bow and play the song, all right? Rest, two. One, two, three, Measure five, two, one, two. Measure nine. Measure thirteen, two, three, one, two, three. And the last note, hold, and off. Forest fun. Now just know that that is very different than the violin part. So you really need to count your part to make it sync up with our cello, bass, and violin parts. 188, the cello part, orchestra arrangement of Forest Fawn. Cellos, 
Notice in the music, you've got some notes uh, that are supposed to be played F natural and C natural most of the time, but once in a while, there is a C sharp to be played. And you'll know what note when that is and where that is by the sharp that is B for the note. So when we play the C right here, it'll be played as a C sharp, okay? Same way with there and right there. But as the key signature says, normally our C's would be natural, and of course our F's are natural also. I'm gonna say rest two, and then we're gonna start with an up bow. I'm gonna go from A to F natural, second finger, remember? Second finger for the F natural. Here we go. And rest two. how you play force fawn on the cello make sure you practice it I should have practiced more I had some sour notes in there but that gives you an idea of how to play that cellos okay hello basses this is 188 forest fawn orchestra arrangement your part is quite different than the other parts in the orchestra so you've got to really read your part correctly and count it you can't rely on listening to the other parts in the orchestra to help you. So you have to really count this, okay? All right, let's go through uh, the notes first. When we play with this with the uh, full orchestra, this first rest that you have here is actually going to be played by the violins and violas. So you will hear them play this first note. Uh, they'll have a note here instead of a rest is what I was trying to say. And then you will begin on the first complete measure. So I'm going to count this off as a rest two, and then the violins will come in three, and then we will come in on the next note. So it'll be like this, rest two, three, D two, D, C two, C, D two, D, a, E, A, D, two, and so on. I'm gonna say rest, two, three, and then we're going to start on our deal. Here we go. Rest, two, three. helps you understand your part, practice it slower than that, and then try to get up to that speed. Okay. okay, orchestra, well that is page 37 in your book. I'm looking at right now the bass book, if you're wondering. So we learned today what three note slurs looked like and sounded like and how you played them. We did um, pick up notes in three quarter time and we spent quite a bit of time on the last song on this page Forest Fawn, which is an orchestra arrangement. This is something that will require much more effort from the group, but worth the effort. Once everyone gets their part learned and we play it together, it sounds amazing and it's so fun and such a wonderful 
sound from our group when everyone has their own special part and they're playing it well. So spend some good time on your part, learn it really well because when we play it with the other parts of the orchestra, at first it might sound confusing or be confusing to you. And if you don't know your own part really well, it'll make these other parts sound even more confusing to you. So make sure you're really secure on your part on 188 and then it'll sound and work much better with the other parts when we rehearse together. You guys have a great one. We'll see you on page 38.